Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we welcome to our stage a young lady who recently made a very big splash in Hollywood. This attractive actress started at the bottom and swam her way to the top. Here she is, England's answer to Esther Williams, Miss Diana Dores. Right here. <clears throat> oh. I thought you were someone else. I wish I was. Have you just moved in? Yeah. That's nice. I live just over there, so we'll be neighbors. Dave's girlfriend. I'm a friend of his. Why? I'm his brother. So you're Johnny. Famous Johnny. Well, I've heard a lot about you. In a short space of time, I've heard quite a bit about you. Really? I hear we might be related, you and I. I said I was a friend of Dave's, that's all. Good. I like it better that way. And what does that mean? Just making conversation. You have a very funny line of talk, Mr. Mansell. I thought we'd understand one another. I'm easy to understand. And you're not as feminine as you look. What's your name? Okay, so joining me today is Anna Kale, an arts and culture writer specialising in classic film and television. Uh, she has written for a number of publications and websites, including Little White Lies, Film Stories, and the British Film Institute. Um, and have also appeared on Radio 4, which for my American watchers is like NPR or uh, would be national NPR, I think. Um, so my, her writing subjects are wide ranging, but she has an interest in British cinema of the 40s, 50s and 60s, and in particular showcasing the role of strong female voices in film culture. Now which leads us to today. As I mentioned in my community chat, I'm here today talking to the author of The Real Diana Dawes. Yay! <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, being with me today and um, the people who, who've been listening to my channel um, who may not know so the, my, the most popular video on my channel is uh, What If Marilyn Monroe Had Lived. Ah, oh, okay. And uh, maybe people don't realise that uh, I actually used Diana Dawes' IMDb page as a kind of guide as to how Marilyn's career might have played out had she, had she lived. So, um, but anyway... Um, so I hope anyone who is interested in blonde bombshells of the golden age will listen because I was fascinated by your book. Um, so I, I, I have listened to the Writers on Film podcast. Mm. So I hope I don't bore you by asking similar <laughs> questions. <laughs> No, absolutely not. I I, I love writing, uh, talking about Diana Dawes in any oh. capacity, so that's absolutely fine. Oh, wonderful! So, um, so what what led you to writing the real Diana Dawes? So yeah, it happened purely by accident, really, mm. um, as usual with with things that happen in my writing life. It just kind of was was uh, I think I responded to a tweet, um, which is usually how it happens for me. Um, and yeah, I was kind of got chatting to uh, someone who was um, wanting authors, um, you know, for, for a series of books. And we kind of had a chat about what I might want to write about. And um, the original thing that I kind of approached them about didn't work out. But then we mm. decided upon a biography of Diana Dawes, um, which was perfect, really, kind of timing wise as well, because I'd, I'd 
very recently, you know, before that, had been having a conversation with someone about how, you know, there are a few books about Diana Dawes, few uh, biographies she, she wrote, you know, obviously herself quite quite mm. substantially about her own career. Um, but in terms of biographies, you know, there were a few out there, but there hadn't been one for a long time. And all those that were out there were written largely by middle-aged white men um, who had a certain perspective on her and her career. Um, and I, I remember saying to someone, I would love to, to read a, a really good book about Diana Dawes and her career from a female perspective um, and from a perspective of her career, her, her screen career, um, mm. and not just her personal life, which obviously people dwell on quite a lot. You know, she had a, an interesting personal life, but, you know, she had a really fascinating screen career as well and so I yeah like, I was just gonna say a couple of months after that this opportunity came so I had to you know I had to take the opportunity and write that book myself because mm. it didn't exist sometimes that's what you have to do with you know it's like I, I want to read this so yeah or I want to watch this so you have to do it yourself so. absolutely yeah I had no plans to write a book at that stage I was very kind of early into a, a kind of writing career mm. kind of later on in life um so yeah it wasn't part of the plan that I was going to write a book uh, at any stage never mind that stage but yeah it just kind of happened and I had to go with it because yeah it was a great opportunity to to get Diana's story out there for a new audience mm. and I mean that's you know, as someone who made you know released my first film at gosh how, I was like 41 when it came mm. out so you know which is supposedly too old to make it and you know I, I one of my good friends who's in his 60s he writes screenplays for a uh, lifetime films so you know mm. for, for anyone who's watching is like oh gee I never achieved my dreams like well <laughs> if, this, yeah. if you're alive there's time Absolutely. I started writing at 41, 42, um, you know, I, I, it, it just kind of happened and happened quite quickly. Um, you know, it, it just, yeah, sometimes you've got to go with those opportunities and have that confidence as well, I think, in your ability. Yeah, I mean, and it's a wonderful book. Like, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I wrote it on, on Goodreads as well, but it really does read like a novel. Like it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, it, even though... It is about a filmography. It, it doesn't, you know, read like you know academic writing. Like it, it just, it's a really, it's a ripping yarn. Like it's thank really you. well written. And, oh, thank uh, you. And, and yeah. as someone who, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably your audience in the sense that I really, even though I knew her name. Like like a lot of these, you know, golden age stars, I had n never watched her films, and I didn't know that she was a singer. Like uh, in my mind, it was just like, oh, you know, she was a, another Marilyn Monroe in, in mm. my in my mind. Like the, which, uh, as you said in the book, is sort of that something that she didn't really take on so <laughs> happily. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, talking to my parents who are obviously like sort of grew up in in that that time, mm -hmm. you know, fifties and the sixties. Like, you know, when I mentioned to them that I was reading a book about Eartha Kitt, my father said, like, "Oh, she's so talented." And then when I mentioned I was reading a book about Diana Dawes, they just said, like, "Oh, yes, she, you know, she was of our generation." You yeah. Know, she was a Marilyn Monroe type and and because I because I've read your book I feel like oh you know that mm. yeah she she really does need this book yeah you know, absolutely to... yeah absolutely she, she's a fascinating person and um you know yes as, as you say her 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 story it, it reads like fiction it re you know it reads like a novel but that's what you know that's what her life was like you know she mm -hmm. she had a fascinating journey as as a person and, and as a as a as a star as an actor mm -hmm. um but yeah, she she I had to kind of reflect that I think in the way the story told. But I wanted to engage people as well, you know. I wanted to write it in a way that was accessible for people mm. who weren't, as you say, film academics or kind of really into the detail of her career, her screen career. You know, there are other texts you, you can you can find about her. You know, there are there are a, a small few that focus mm. on her screen career and her as a star as a screen star and come from an academic perspective they're really fascinating mm. kind of um, and I did 
utilize those resources i did kind of call upon them you know in terms of kind of referencing and kind of building that kind of context around her and as a screen star but her personal journey and her personal story i think is accessible to anybody who wants to to read um an interesting tale of a woman living through really interesting times you know mm. the, the social context around her was fascinating as well the times in which she lived yeah. She started her film career post-war, mm-hmm. post Second World War. Um, you know, she 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 was acting through the fifties, which in Britain was was an interesting time in terms mm-hmm. of kind of um, film output. And through the sixties, where you know her career kind of uh, took a, a, a different turn. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she was very adaptable. She had to kind of adapt and flex around um, you know what was happening at the time from a, an acting point of view. But she was a real trooper you know she really mm. worked really hard and every time she faced kind of a, a bit of a career nosedive for various reasons and I won't spoil the book for people who want to read right. it because it is a re- you need to read that journey from start mm. to finish about what happened to her um but she would you know she'll take the knockbacks but she'd come back you know and she'd yeah. do different things she'd adapt like you say she, she was a singer she had a great voice but she was an all-round entertainer you know she mm. she would work the clubs you know she she did the um you know she'd do a, a set at a, you know casinos in hollywood mm. or even in the uk you know anyone who's in the uk working men's clubs are not the most salubrious and exciting places to perform but she would do it because she needed to keep working you know mm. and she would adapt her output accordingly but she was a great all-round entertainer really funny engaging clever woman who who was really kind of um a wonderful guest to have on Mm. you know a tv chat show or on a a kind of you know she she had such um such a varied set of talents she Mm. could call upon and and that really helped her i think in her career and sustaining that career right through to the early 80s definitely I mean, she definitely held her own with like the greats of Bob Hope and... Oh, Diane, I'm finally glad that you, you made it to our shores. Well, it's thanks to you, Bob. After all, you're the one who discovered me in England. Well, I can't take too much credit for that. It's not exactly like looking for a needle in the haystack. <laughs> you know, Bob, I would really adore to make a picture with you. Really? Mm, it would be the greatest thrill of my life to make one of those road pictures with you and... And that other fellow, uh, what's his name? Um... Uh... I had it on the tip of my tongue, but I spit it out. (laughs) Well, he's very nice, Bob, but I mean, after all, you're the one that's the big attraction. Me? Where'd you get that idea? Well, it says so right over there on that card. Yeah. (laughs) Please, don't point to my ad libs, please. Yeah. Um, And, I mean... You know, to skip ahead a little bit to my like, you know, sort of what if, like part of my, when I finally listened to her music, I was like, why is she only recorded one album? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, my goodness, like, you know, and that, that sort of, like, what, why didn't she have a contract with Verve? Because mm. that whole 60s jazz revival yeah. was like right then, you know, she could have been next to, um, is the Blossom Dairy, I think her name is, or Blossom okay. Dairy. Yeah. Um, that that sort of, yeah, I, I, oh my goodness, like, just, I mean, so, I mean, as any, uh, hopefully people who've watched my channel may know, I used to be a drag queen performer, and, you know, one, one of the things you, because I, I liked sort of that sort of British comedy drag, mm. and one of the things you really, really look for with some of these songs is someone who you know went with these funny songs like the gentleman is a dope and she has my favorite version of it and partly because you can hear every word like some mm. of these some of these singers they sort of slur the words and you can't really hear it and then you kind of miss it and if you're going to perform it you want someone like Diana Dawes who who just sings mm. like crystal clear she's got a great voice and she um you feel it as well you know you mm. feel it in those lyrics you know she's lived a life at that stage yes. you know she, she's barely i can't how old would she have been hardly any age at all and yet um yeah she she's lived a life and you you want you know and when she's singing those lyrics she's she's lived it herself she she definitely has it's like well my goodness and ah uh, anyway i'll get into a bit of a what if later <laughs> but uh I, I guess I want to touch on um, something that really interested me was how, like, you know, instant, unlike sort of the Jane Mansfields and the Marilyns, 
she you know she went to acting school she did yeah she went to act she she left home at the age of 14 um Ooh. moved to london on her own um and went to lambda which was um the london academy of music and dramatic arts and um yeah she kind of took classes there um and kind of started this uh journey into a, an acting career um mm. she wanted to be a star she didn't necessarily want to be an actor um which right. i know sounds a bit of a kind of a strange thing to say but she saw herself as a screen star she wanted mm. to be a hollywood star she wanted to be discovered and she wanted it, that glamorous life and that's what attracted her to acting was not the acting itself but the um the, the star potential you know the kind of that lifestyle that she kind of craved that she read in magazines and kind of saw in, in the in the movies you know mm. uh, but she it turned out she was a really talented actor um, yes. You know, she was very good, and she mm. uh, she soon started getting parts. You know, she she started um, winning small parts in films, um, and as part of the, um, she joined the Rank Charm School, which um, for for people who aren't aware of its existence, was a kind of a, an attempt by J Arthur Rank mm. um, to kind of, I guess, kind of. Um, churn out you know young stars that could be kind of mm. um star in his films and kind of bring in you know the, it, it was a real kind of purposeful act to mm. kind of just yeah a production line of stars essentially and she yeah. joined the rank charm school at an early age mm. and um she 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 knew how it worked she was a very clever woman even as a young woman she was mm. really clever and, and savvy and she knew how this stuff worked so she went through the motions of kind of that that what was required of her in the rank charm school um she, she'd been to lambda she'd done really well you know she got mm. her gold cup or whatever it was you know for acting you know she, she, she'd done everything she needed to do to kind of do well at that at acting mm. school she started acting on, on on the screen as well um when she joined the rank charm school she already you know was kind of starting that journey with her career and that obviously escalated as as, as the you know the, the parts kind of came rolling in for her in this production line of films mm. but what the rank charm school also did was when when actors weren't acting on screen they'd they'd go on the stage so they had a, a deal with a with a couple of kind of theatres where they they'd be loaned out to the theatre to do some theatre productions so she got like a real kind of grounding in, in acting mm. skills across the board which I think really you know served her well throughout her career because you know the, the nuances of you know the differences between screen and stage acting um building up those other skills you know in, mm. kind of, in terms of screen presence and you know they were taught you know how to walk and how to get in and out of cars and things like that you know as, as staffs um but she she knew she had to kind of go through this process in order to get mm. to where she wanted to be which was to get a you know a, a proper contract and kind of be a screen star so she she knew how it worked and she, she kind of um took it for everything it was worth really in terms of what she could get out of that she didn't necessarily enjoy the experience of being at the the charm school but she made the most of those opportunities and she won some great roles you know during mm. that time um in kind of late 40s early 50s she she was already kind of um picking up parts which people would recognize her for you know in terms mm. of the um that yeah the type of roles that she she took on even at a very young age i mean she was she was really young you know when she when she was yes. playing older than she was um but she looked you know she she looked a lot older than she was and you know she kind of got away with it yeah i mean i mean maybe because i'm in my 40s now that i when i look at those photos i think oh she does look 19 but mm. you know but i guess she she does she's very womanly yeah and she and and what surprised me is because i guess i imagine that she went you know the, the the Marilyn Jane route with the baby voice, and she has that Lauren Bacall like really like sultry voice. Yeah, and yeah, it's just like oh wow, like you know the first time I heard her, I was like oh she's she's different. Yeah, she is. She is. I mean, I know I'm biased because obviously you know, mm. I've spent a lot of time uh, with Diana Dawes, and yeah, she's my best mate now. Um, you know, she <laughs> kind of um, she she didn't like that association with those other stars because she wanted to be a star in her own right. She was mm. she was Diana Dawes. She was not Britain's Marilyn Monroe. She was Diana Dawes. So she she was just, she she felt she deserved to be a star in her own right. She started mm. acting before Marilyn as well. You know, she 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 was had a crib way before um so she didn't like that tag but she understood no. it she, she understood why you know that association because Marilyn Monroe was a massive star and you know the mm. the, the um the similarities obviously you know were, were very there visually um but yeah in terms of the kind of role she had in terms of her acting style you know she was very different and she was very much her own person um and she wasn't um 
you know that, that again yeah that 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 stereotype of a blonde um right. kind of actress from that from that period she was she was different you know she 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 had a lot to give um in terms of mm. her um acting and her screen presence in some ways she kind of had the roles that um jane and marilyn really craved like the yield to the nights yeah type roles that you know i think you know, Marilyn sort of fought for towards the end and kind of got with the misfits, but yeah. not really. And, you know, I think, and maybe Jane Manfield with her, her episode of um, Hitchcock's um, Presents. Mm. But, you know, so, yeah, I guess the, the grass is greener for some people. Yeah, well, but... yeah. Ironically, Diana Dodd wanted Marilyn Monroe's career. You know, she wanted to go to Hollywood and be a massive star over there. Um, and it didn't work out for her, but, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's yeah. such a pity that she, yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil what happened, but, you know, it's it's a pity that it didn't happen for her because, like, could you imagine her in, like, a, a Billy Wilder production yeah. or, yeah. you know, or because of her voice, like, she, she could have done, you know, like a Hello Dolly, she could have done, she could have done anything really, like, she was just so talented. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she she could have gone really far in in Hollywood. Um, it, it didn't work out for her um, for, for reasons I won't go into. Because again, don't want to spoil the story. No, um, and I want people to buy the book. So uh, exactly, yeah. I want people to buy the book. You know, everyone <laughs> who watches this really needs to buy this book because it's a great book. Because it and and as they and as they said on um, writers on film, like it, it's you know through her you kind of learn the story of British film. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. She was there through a really interesting period in, in British film and kind of her career followed that trajectory that, um, you know, kind of just encapsulated what what happened in British cinema through mm -hmm. the mid-20th century and into the 70s and, and 80s. Um, yeah, she kind of lived that, you know, on screen. She, she kind of um, reflected that in her career choices, in her screen choices, mm -hmm. uh, her lack of choices, I think, um, was true. a big factor. But, but as you said, like, you know, like a, like a show, like an Eartha kit, she was always able to adapt to yeah. what, what was going, going on. Yeah, she... absolutely. Yeah. She, she, she put together a cabaret act and did that mm. instead, you know, when, when the screen roles weren't, weren't happening for her, you know, she told that around the country and also, you know, abroad um, and did that, you know, she, she did radio, she did TV, she did a lot of TV in America, you know, mm. the Hollywood thing didn't necessarily work out, but she um she did other things she did hitchcock um right. present she did um like you mentioned obviously you know she she did tv stuff with bob hope and kind of other people mm. she was a great guest to have you know she's very engaging um and i think the americans liked her for that mm. you know um she yeah she made the most of the opportunities that came her way um it, yeah but yeah she kind of w was so adaptable that she she was able to to do that where i think a lot of other people wouldn't have been able to to adapt in that way no, and no, they really don't. Um, you know, I think I think that's sort of one of those testimonies to, I guess, anyone who wasn't Marilyn kind of had mm. to give the press a reason to talk about them. You know, it was you. you they mm. really had to hustle, right? Yeah, um, and obviously she gave the the American press a reason to talk about her for all the wrong reasons. Yes. Um, so oh, yeah. yeah, that that didn't work out because of the puritan nature of the the American. Um, press. It, That's it, right. Uh, yeah, it kind of she shot herself in the foot a little bit. I think. Yeah, you've got you've got to sort of walk that fine line of like, yeah. You know, but you know she. But in any case, like in some ways, I guess perhaps because she didn't make it in the U.S., that maybe endeared her to the British public more. Like it's sort of like, well, she's ours. Yeah, I think it did. I think she she played it to her advantage in some ways when she mm. came back. You know, she kind of had to start again with kind of you know, going back to the the British kind of roles that she'd hoped mm. that she'd left behind. But yeah, she kind of used it to her, yeah, her advantage, I guess, in the way she framed it. Um, mm. That kind of return, you know, um, this is where I belong. Kind of, you know, um, yeah. She she yeah. Again, she adapted um, mm. to the circumstances and kind of kept going. But yeah, I mean. I... Oh gosh, there's there's so many things I want to ask about, but um, you know, I I I mean, not that she should have to be this savvy, but I admired how savvy she was in negotiating 
the rank organization because mm. you know her her um her classmate let's say or her her one of her grad you know the the other alumni you know Joan Collins has said in interviews a number of times that you know, apparently like you know when she went first went to Hollywood with um with Fox and apparently Marilyn took her aside and said look you know here are the snakes you've got to avoid and mm. she you know being Joan Collins you know very like well I've I've met many snakes in in the UK and I thought well why you know wait a minute that's that 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 would be the rank organization and mm. you know some of the situations you describe are you know very dicey that she does yeah. manage to to navigate yeah it, it was um she was lucky in some ways I think she um she had she 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 um obviously had a, a she was seen very positively by by people mm. you know saw her talent saw you know her as as a as an interesting individual and kind of maybe mm. having a little bit more to her than than some of the other rank starlets um right. and she made friends you know with people she kind of built good relationships with with people um you know the producer sydney box for example you know she had a good relationship with him mm. and you know she kind of um she was able to kind of navigate what was a, a really difficult um circumstances for for a girl a girl she was a girl she was a teenage girl in this kind of situation and having to navigate these things she shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place but she was as were many other young girls and she managed mm. to kind of sidestep a lot of the um the situations that other young women found themselves mm. in and she you know she narrowly avoided situations i think where others uh, walked straight into them and i think she was lucky um, that mm. she did and get herself into worse situations than she did but she did have a fair share of difficult situations yes. to navigate at a young age and that um the men who used her the men who took advantage of of her um and many other young women you know she she did see that she did face that you know there are rumors that i didn't kind of dwell on in the book because mm. there isn't the evidence to kind of you know to, to kind of back the stories up about things that happened to her but certainly she commented herself you know on, mm. uh, on a number of occasions about that uh, those circumstances in which she found herself as, as a young woman and the things mm. that she saw you know happening to other women um she was kind of lucky but also she had to kind of go through some really difficult things at a very young age and yeah, I kind of wanted to reflect that in the book about mm. how 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 does a woman of her age kind of you know get herself through those situations and that, yeah her resolve and kind of her uh, her strength as, as mm. a woman um, really kind of comes through you know in terms of how she dealt with those situations and kind of moved mm. on from them but she was exploited you know the, the the exploitation that happened you know within that studio system right. um in the uk w was was pretty shocking you know um and yeah uh, you know hopefully that kind of context comes through in the book through her own journey and she was mm. lucky she kind of survived it and kind of got through it but only by her own kind of you know um ability to kind of mm. um Kind of have that sharpness of mind in, in situations but yeah she she um like it you know most young women she she, she saw what's happening around her and mm. it was like there was no choice you know that that was what the how it was for, for for young actors in those days that's just how it was and you had to kind of mm. get through it and that's awful that's an awful looking back you know that's a, a horrendous situation to put vulnerable young people into um right. and expect them to to kind of you know sink or swim she was she was just so young i mean and and put in these like really adult positions adult mm. roles and yeah, yeah. you know she, but you know i mean i guess one good thing she did have a supportive family it seemed like which I to, guess a point, is fairly yeah. rare. to a yeah, point yeah to a point yeah they um her mom and dad um she was an only child and mm. um, obviously she'd gone to london at a very young age on her own mm. to pursue this acting career that they didn't really want her to pursue her dad no. particularly wasn't happy about her going off and kind of you know he kind of tolerated he's like well you know you'll come back and you know you'll do something a bit more to, you know have a, get a proper job you know um That's right. 
so yeah, he agreed to let her go um, on the proviso that she she'd come back and you know she, mm. she she'd be a, a, a drama teacher or she kind of you know teach elocution or something. Um, but actually, she didn't come back and she stayed. Her mum was more supportive. Her mum saw her as um, I guess the star she she could have been mm. herself potentially. Um, her mum, you know, was, was a, a performer um, herself. You know, at a young age. So it's kind of you can see her mum maybe kind of hoping had high hopes for her and her and her career um but as i say she was an only child she you know she left swindon behind you know you know suburban kind of you know middle class life in 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 a kind of small provincial town mm. to move to london to kind of pursue this career you know as, as a teenager and yes there was a there was some support there but yeah it wasn't wholehearted support i don't think no. um for her from from a family um and yeah it kind of she had a, a a tricky relationship, I think, kind of with, with her dad, particularly as a kind of mm. result of, of 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 those decisions to to kind of go pursue her dream. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, of course, because you, you want kids to be near near you, I guess. And... Yeah, yeah, and she was an only child as well. And mm. later on, her mum and dad were quite a lot older when when they had her. I think her mum was in her forties. So, um, yeah, it it, it was a. a an interesting kind of um you know career that she wanted to pursue but essentially you know not not with the overarching support of her family no oh gosh there's so many things i want to ask you about but uh uh <laughs> let me sort of take a left turn and say okay uh i've only just started watching some early british films okay and from the golden age and i you know, kind of fallen in love with David Farrar a bit, which oh, is, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I suppose most people <laughs> did, and I did notice she did play one role with him, a kind of, um, a kind of Mae West type role. Was that Diamond City? Diamond City. Yeah, yeah. That was her first lead role um, in a film, and she got that because someone else dropped out. She was probably ten years younger than the part required at that time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she was able to play it and play it really well. She she did really well in that film. Mm. Um, so I, I want to ask the same question that um, the other one, the writers on film asked, which is, um, and I've alluded to a couple of them, but which, you know, for someone like me who hasn't watched any of her films, like where should we start? So... Uh, You've mentioned Yield to the Night um, mm. a couple of times in kind of in the in the interview, and that is an amazing film, and mm. she just gives an amazing performance in that film. Um, it was it was a great film. It was a great piece of kind of social filmmaking as well. It was quite a controversial film at the time. Mm. It's really interestingly made film. Um, you know, she kind of she she absolutely gives it her all in that film, and a really understated performance. But she um, she showed just what a talent she was in terms of mm. her acting skills in that film. And it's it's a great film, really important film to watch as well. So Jay Lee Thompson, the director, he wanted to make it for a reason, and um, yeah, that it absolutely has the impact I think that he he wanted that film to have. But it's quite a serious film. It's quite mm. a um, a heavy film in in many ways. But it is a great film. So mm. I think if you want to watch a Diana Dawes film, if you had to only watch one, it's, that's the one you should watch because that's it's the, the most important film of her career. Mm. But for me, her other kind of mid fifties performances in Brit in British films around that time, there are some really great films mm. that I think she was great in, but also are great examples of British cinema from the time. So my, one of my favourites is Tread Softly, Stranger which is a British kind of gritty northern set noir, um, British noir. It's very mm. um, unique in the way uh, um, it's presented. You know, it kind of, it, it takes those elements of, of noir, but presents them in a very British way, in a really mm. interesting way. It's a great film. She's amazing in it. I mean, I don't know why this beautiful woman has turned up in this northern industrial town. You know, uh, she, she, she shouldn't be there, uh, but she is. And she... It gives an amazing performance in, in that role. She she's trouble. She really is trouble. Mm. But yeah, she's so fascinating to watch. And she's beautiful. She looks absolutely stunning in that film. The the scene in which she's introduced, she just looks amazing. Um mm. and just demonstrates just what a, a talent she is, but also how what a presence she was on screen. So that would be one that I would recommend. Mm. And also from that um that period as well, and a, in a similar vein is the long haul 
which is, again is a, is a British kind of noir type, hard boiled type noir mm. film set in road haulage. Um, you just like completely unglamorous, and yet here again is Diana Dawes, this glamorous figure, kind of in amongst all this kind of grime and grit. Um, it's a really interesting film. She stars alongside uh, Victor Mature, who Ooh. is maybe not the best performer in the world, um, but he was a star. Um, <laughs> but she kind of completely outplays him in every scene. Um, why he's there in the first place is, is never really known. But it's a great film. It's, it's a really Ooh. interesting film um, and not very often kind of cited in terms of her career as, as, as a good example. I think it's a great little film, really interesting of kind of British cinema of that time. Um, and the other one I, I, I really like is Passport to Shame, which okay. sounds as bad as the title suggests. It <laughs> is a real kind of sexploitation type film as far as British cinema could be, mm. you know, in terms of its kind of the, you know, the confines of British cinema. Right. It's a really weird film. Um, and yeah. she's great, again, she's great in it, but it's mm. a really unusual film, I would say, of, of the time. Um, <laughs> and a little bit controversial. But again, she she, gets, she gives great performance, mm. um, that kind of femme fatale, kind of sexy role, um, but really giving it some in terms of kind of the intelligence that she brings to that role. She's not just a face and a figure, you know, she she brings real nuance to, to those roles, um, I think. But they're great examples of British cinema as well from the 50s um, and kind of where it kind of got to um, in terms of its output. She did a lot of lighter roles at around the same mm. time as well. Her career was interesting in that kind of parallel aspect mm. of it in British cinema. She had those kind of grittier roles, but she also did a lot of kind of light comedy. Um, so, you know, right. like she, the, she did the holiday you know, films, right? The, yeah, the, the kind of the like, like the 40s beach holidays. Ones. Yeah, um, Value for Money, which is a mid 50s one that she did, mm. was, was lovely. It's such a lovely little film. <laughs> Uh, really entertaining, a lovely watch, great cast, uh, really well played out, and she's she's lovely in it. Mm. Um, so again, that's a great example of that other aspect of British cinema from the time, which was the mm. kind of the the lighter comedy. And she she showed she was she was great with comedy. She was a really great comedic actress. Oh. So she showed that from an early age mm. and went on to do you know a lot more with that as, as her career progressed. So um, as long as the happy is another one where she kind of gives a lighter supporting role. But yeah, um, value for money I think would would be a good example of her lighter side mm. so I'm, I'm definitely gonna import them because in Japan the yeah. only one that's available is Berserk <laughs> wow okay with Joan Crawford so, yeah with Joan Crawford which I, I did like to mention that it's in the book so uh, unfortunately it's time to wrap things up because I'm not gonna pay for a, uh, pro zoom um, <laughs> so uh, uh, if people want to buy the book, which I, I think everyone who listens to this must buy the book. Um, where can they buy it? So it is available on Amazon. That was probably mm. the, the easiest uh, place to find it. Um, it's, it's just come out in paperback not so long ago as well. So you did, there's that option too. It's Ooh. a beautiful, the, the photos in it are wonderful. Mm. Um, so I took a lot of time, made a lot of effort to really choose some great photos to accompany the book. So yeah, it's, it's definitely worth seeking out. If you can afford the hardback, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful book. But the, the you know, the, the same photos are in the paperback. So you, you get mm. the same effect. Um, so it's available on Amazon. Um, if you're in the UK, it's available in most kind of um kind of mainstream online bookshops so mm -hmm. you know you waterstones and blackwells and so on um but yeah i, I don't know where, whether um, it's available in other countries or not i think it's available in the us um and my brother's got a copy in australia and i don't know where mm -hmm. he got it from so there might be an option for people in australia too i mean i, I got it on kindle in japan so oh okay um, cool yeah you know so it, it it seems to be available worldwide so yeah i, I hope I hope everyone can go out and get it and leave a great review and um, yeah, like anyone who's interested in Blonde Bombshells or even the history of cinema, I mean, it's mm. just a fascinating look at the history of cinema in Britain. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and if more people, if it gets more people to w watch some Diana Ross films or kind of watch some British mm. cinema of that period, then I'm really happy because that was the intention to, to get yeah. people interested and kind of find out more, you know, in their own way. Um, so yeah, that was the intention. So hopefully that'll happen. It definitely worked on me. Um, so thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, 